Hey guys, welcome back to Kiwi Classics and Customs. Today we're going to fit some Kindigit Design flush mounted door handles in the 67 Cougar Fastback. So here's a little instruction book, you know, it's got 10 or so pages in here of how to do it, which is pretty handy. Uh, and it's all colour pictures showing you the step by step, which makes life a little easier, easier to see. Uh, comes with a template for left and right hand side, that's the uh, cutting the holes out in your door. Uh, to weld these puppies too. So here's your door handle. Uh, basically you come up to it. It's a little hard to show you right here. You push with your thumb, you pull the door handle. That pushes this part at the back and that which will push and then actuate and release your door latch. Uh, the Fords and Chevys are a little bit different. Uh, the Ford has a system where the rod actually pulls up and down from underneath. So what they've done is uh, created this little gadget that changes it from a push to a pull, uh, which you know, we'll be able to show you that a little bit clearer when we actually get it in. So yeah, let's get started. Now, one of the trickiest things with this installation, or the trickiest thing really, is deciding where to put it. Uh, obviously we've got some holes here from the old door handles, which are not gonna be used anymore. We're gonna have to fill those, some of those in. Uh, now, I've cut out the little template do a nice neat job cutting that out, It'll, that's where it starts, you know. Now the temptation is to want to bring this back and cover as much of the holes as you can so you don't have to weld any more material back in. The problem you run into there, you've got inner framework in here, which pretty much lines up with the front edge of this hole. Sorry, the back edge of the hole. Uh, and that is your, the total size of your door handle. Now the only piece you're going to see is this centre section, which is what the little cutout template's for. So if you put that right back here, there's not going to be room for it. This, this piece hiding behind the scenes, the outer piece, has to be far enough forward that it's going to clear this inner framework back here. So, so don't get caught in that trap. Realistically, this door handle is going to have to go about there. We can kind of keep that top line. I'm going to kind of keep that level like that. And But all this here is going to have to be filled in. There's also a little stamp piece of the panel here that, um, you know, is, is, that's a cougar thing. Um, so I'm going to cut that out as well rather than trying to flatten it out and actually stretch the panel. So we're going to cut that out. What I'm going to do is get this measured up, get it where I want it. So we really do have to it's like, it's the size of this when you're getting your back measurement, it's this plus that there, which is about three quarters of an inch. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get that done and taped on. What I will do is split a little bit of masking tape. So, that. That's gonna be just this back edge at the top of the hole here. Um, now also getting it level is critical um, so you can measure from the ground to that you can eyeball it if you're confident enough in your eyeball measurements um, let's have a look what we got here that's it's about half an inch so we need about a little bit more than that So yeah, be careful where you measure to because like this top angle don't measure here because that, that's sloping up. Um, so you really want, I believe anyway, that you want this door handle level with the ground. So I'm got, I've eyeballed it to what I think it should be there. That's, uh, Thirty-one and a quarter. So this is why you measure, because that's an eighth of an inch low at the front. Yeah. So we'll give that a little adjustment. Let's bring that up. Got 
three quarters of an inch there. So what we can do now, is sharpie time, and So yeah, this gives you an idea of uh, well how much we got to cut out, and also how much we've got to fill in. So we're going to have to like cut a piece here, come around, eliminate this bolt hole or stud hole that was there, bring a piece down here, and actually eliminate this little recess bit. Yeah, so. And then obviously so all this has to go. New piece welded in. Then we'll remark the hole you know, the, onto the onto the new metal. And uh, yeah, then we'll be getting close to uh, being able to size it up and she'll you know give it a test fit. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get cutting and back in a sec. I've got this area cut out the pieces we want to get rid of here and kind of rounded things out to make it an easier pattern to make for the piece of metal we got to add back in there. Uh, just cut that out with the cutoff wheel, uh, use a die grinder in the corners, to make things as smooth and easy to trace as possible. Uh, so then it's just a matter of getting a bit of scrap metal, the right gauge obviously, the same gauge as what we're working with, and it's a little bit hard for you guys to see there but Put this in here, got a nice sharp scribe. I'm just gonna scribe around in here. And that is the shape we've got to cut out. I don't know whether to be able to see that or even we're in the middle of the shot but um, just a faint scribe line there uh, got to cut that out and then we'll weld that in and we'll do the same for the old key lock in this particular case uh, the customer wants remote locks so we're doing away with the old key lock so we'll tra trace a little piece for that and burn it up all right i've got my little pieces of metal cut up and trimmed and just sat in the hole there um, Remarked, used that little template, reused it, um, just marked where we're actually going to complete the hole, just to go and give you an idea of what I'm up to. So I'm going to get that burned in and um, finish shaping that hole up, and I'll be back. Okay, so we bounced over to the other side. I've been working on both sides just so we can allow time for. You've got to when you're welding in the in a fairly soft panel like that you've got to allow you know just weld a little bit let it cool down weld a little bit so i've been going side to side we've got this side finished up first so we're going to carry on with the installation now i pulled the center part out of the the, the door handle it's just a couple of cap screws on the back and that comes out so it's out of the way now that obviously goes in the back now this is machined and it's dead flat across the surface now the shape, particularly on the Cougar, and it obviously varies from car to car, this profile here can be quite different. Um, now the Cougar's quite round, this is flat. So what happens is you end up touching on these outside edges, you have a gap where the panel's coming up to the inner edge, and you know you have a gap here because it's riding up and the metal's doing this around the handle. So what I've done is gone in there with a flat disc, an angle grinder, and profiled the shape of this. So that it's much closer to the you know the actual shape of the door. So when it sits in there, it just sits in nice. The more time you can spend just getting things to fit nice before you pull the trigger on the welder, uh, you know it, it is a little bit tedious, uh, but the end result makes it worth it. You know, like if you can, if this is sitting in there happy and comfortable and not gaps and you know just not happy about being in there, if you can get it into its happy place with a little bit of you know just a little grind try it, grind a bit off, try it until you get it right. And it really will pay dividends when you're done. So let's get this in. I'm gonna slide this in 
from the back and then put a magnet across it to just hold it in place while we start getting it tacked. Yeah, try to get that spring out of the way because that's not our friend at the moment. If I can, there we go. Now, so that's going to come up in behind. We'll get it located a little bit hard to see from this angle, but for me anyway. Uh, but that's that's somewhere pretty close. So I'm going to put the magnet across it there. I can take a little step back and uh, get that lined up nicely in the hole. That's that uh, second pair of hands, you know. So yeah, that's where it's going to sit. I'm going to basically do a continuous weld right around the perimeter, hold that in, then we can load the handle in from the back, connect up the linkages, and it should work. So let's see if it does. I'm going to start welding. Okay, so there you have it with it all welded in. Um, this take, does take a little bit of time. You've got to weld right around that perimeter of the hole and then grind it and file it and, and get it pretty shaped. You can MIG or TIG it, uh, TIG cleans up a little quicker, but MIG's quite doable as well. Um, yeah, you just gotta kinda take your time and make it pretty. And yeah, let me show you how it operates. Okay, operation wise, we just use the stock linkage. You just need to do adjust the height a little bit. It hooks onto that little um, little rocker mechanism that's on the back of it uh, that comes from Condigit and makes for a very slick operation. Push it in, open the door. Not a bad setup, I like them. I've been doing these, I think the first set I did was like 2013. And uh, yeah, I've done a lot of these. I really like how they work. They look good when they're done. You can get different shapes. You can get little thinner ones. You can get some that have the little, um, like a faux button area there, like it comes down more of a hockey stick shape. Um, so take a look at them online, can dig it. Um, yeah, they are fiddly to fit. They does take a little bit of patience and a little bit of time, uh, but you get a very nice result. So, all right, well, that's it. Take it easy, guys. I'll see you on the next one.